Go on. Today we're demonstrating the iPad Lighting Pad app, which is available for both the iPad and the iPhone or uh, iPod Touch. And we're going to be demonstrating it uh, using uh, a DMX uh, converter that uh, drives off of the wireless Ethernet line in our office. Uh, this converter receives what's called ARPNET protocol uh, by Ethernet and then converts it to DMX data, which then goes to a uh, four-channel DMX uh, dimmer unit that uh, lights these four lights so that we can see what it's doing. And so let's run through the uh, lighting pad, uh, various screenshots. The lighting pad gives you uh, 16 different sliders visible at any time. However, there are 512 different channels of DMX available, and so you have access to all of these, which makes it an ideal uh, tool for setting up a new DMX lighting system, testing things, or possibly running a small show. Down here we have the uh, Q selector, and uh, you have up to 100 different uh, cues. And each cue stores a different value for each of the 512 dimmer channels, and also uh, sets an associated fade time for that particular queue. And so, for example, when we execute this first queue, it will take two seconds to reach the preset levels for that queue that we saw displayed on the uh, screen, and we now see that the uh, lighting has come to the appropriate levels for that queue. So each time we press the Go button, it automatically advances by one queue, executing the queue, and changing the sliders at the rate programmed for that particular queue. When we uh, set a zero fade time, then the queue instantly snaps to a different location. And if we want to manually advance through the different queues, we can either use the plus and minus buttons or we can just flip through the queue settings. If we want to manually change the levels of the sliders, we can do so, and they take effect immediately. And if we want to save the values into a new queue, then we can just press the Save button, and it allows us to name the queue, and it also uh, allows us to select whether we overwrite the currently selected queue or insert this as a new queue into the list. When we press Save, then it's executed, and that's now added to our queue list. In the Settings screen, we can find any receivers, such as our Ethernet to DMX converter, that might be out on the network. So this conducts a search looking through our local net, and it has found this device at this IP address, and we can either then select that, or we can broadcast to all ARTNET devices that are on the network, which allows us to control the DMX channels across multiple devices on the network and this tells us what our current receiver is and allows us to manually force a value in there if the particular device we're talking to doesn't respond to that poll command. We also have the ability to communicate on any of the 16 different ARTNET universes. We're using universe A for our demonstration here, which is the uh, default universe for most lighting consoles. Um, we can display the slider values on our home screen as either a percent or we can display it as an actual value from 0 to 255. And we can name the sliders. You might have noticed at the top of the previous screen that I had already put in names for all of these sliders and you're able to name all 512 of the sliders. And finally, there's a way to request a discount on the particular Ethernet to uh, uh, DMX converter that we're using, which is a handy little inexpensive device. We also have the ability to edit the cues that we've already recorded. This lists some cues that I entered in earlier, and by going into edit mode, um, we can take a cue and rearrange its position in the cue list any way that we like, or we could delete a queue. For example, that one that I added down here, my queue, we could just go ahead and delete that queue and it moves the other queues up in the list. Finally, uh, for the iPad, 
and for the um, iPhone or iPod Touch running uh, iOS 4, we have the ability to save the entire list of cues to your computer or load save list back in using the documents feature that is now supported in iTunes on the applications page. The iPhone version of this application runs exactly the same as what you've seen. It has all the same features. The only thing is that because of the reduced screen space on the iPhone, the slider area is displayed when the iPhone is in landscape mode, and the queue display is displayed when the iPhone is in portrait mode. So that's our demonstration of Lighting Pad, which is available from Alcorn McBride in the Apple iTunes App Store.